King of the castle, king of the castle, do this, do that. Well, how are you getting on? Welcome to the beautiful little town of Natanz here in Iran. Doing a bit of a pit stop here on the way to Kashan with Ali. Hello there. And you'll have to excuse my hair and his hair. We're actually gonna what? get we're gonna get haircuts in Kashan when we get there, I think. But yeah, we're just stopping here in uh, Natanz, a really nice little place. And it's also, interestingly enough, where Iran's nuclear program was foiled in 2010 by a computer worm called Stuxnet. I suggest you Google it. It's really, really interesting interesting but I'm not going to get into that today so if you enjoyed the video give it a like let's go to Kashan so we've just arrived now in Kashan uh, don't have time for a haircut unfortunately so I'm gonna wear this hat for the day until I can get a haircut and sort this absolute mess Ali where are we going right now into uh, Nil Finn Garden yes we are going to the Finn Garden to the beautiful Finn Garden Let's go. So we're inside the garden now. I have to say, first impressions, absolutely beautiful in here. Really nice little water features. It is Friday, so it's very busy, which is unfortunate, but we'll have to make the most of it. Ali, you've been here before, right? Yeah, I've been here before and I love it. And he got in for free and I had to pay 200,000 real. Why'd you get in for free? Because you're Iranian. Probably. Unreal. Dada, tu hasta ahí. I wish for us to be friends forever. Yeah, I wish for that too, but I don't have any money on me, sorry. It's so hot today that I was telling Ali I'd happily jump into that pool if I didn't get arrested. I ask you to do that. Yeah, but I don't want to get arrested and locked up in Iran. It wouldn't be ideal. I'm going to free you. Jump. Let's go. So it was in this garden in 1852 that Amir Kabir, the Kajari Chancellor, was murdered by an assassin sent by the king. Which king was it? It was the infamous Nasser al-Din Shah. And it was in the bathhouse of this very garden. He was a good man who was killed by a bad king. Naughty boys. Naughty boys. So there are a number of Persian gardens that have been registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site from Iran and one of them is the Finn Garden. This garden architecture style is very popular that it has gone beyond Iranian borders and you can see one of the best examples actually that you can see the Persian Garden is in the Taj Mahal in India. It's beautiful and it's lively and there's always water in it. I love it. The boys working hard, hard at work. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Finn Garden, a really, really beautiful garden. Now it is only the beginning of April at the moment and there are a lot of uh, flowers that are just have been planted, obviously. So I would say in May, June, July, August, September, that place would be stunning. It's stunning now, so I can only imagine what it would be like when all the when flowers are there. Yeah. Almost as beautiful as you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Salam Dada! Khubi! Chiatori, Marci, Marci, Khaili Khuba! Good So we're in this really nice traditional uh, restaurant here in Kashan, beautiful. I've gone for juje with rice and hilarious. They give you three, not one, not two, three pieces of French fries. <laughs> and I've gone for some sort of eggplants and tomato stew, which I think is tasty. It smells good. I can't Ali, wait to eat. Ali's a vegan. What's it like being a vegan in Iran? It's a bit challenging, but you can always find something to eat.
So we're now inside Bourgetti House, which is a really beautiful house that was built in 1857 by a Persian architect named Ustad Ali Meryem. It was built for Bourgetti's bride. Imagine building a whole house for your bride, just kind of to show off. Bourgetti was, of course, uh, a very wealthy merchant here. So there were all sorts of these uh, wealthy families here. Actually, the bride was from the Tabatabai family, which also have a, or a house worth visiting nearby. And the city, the historic part of the city is filled with all these historic houses. There was some sort of competition between them for having the best house in the city. Pathetic. Yeah. But it's beautiful. I mean, the first impressions looking around here are that there was so much time put in. We're just mm. in the exterior. We have not gone inside yet. Yeah, actually, and mm. there's all these little details and inscriptions everywhere. It's beautiful. Actually, what you mentioned is also quite interesting to mention that uh, in most Persian architecture houses, the more you go inside, like the inner parts of the house are all, almost always better. They have more design to them. Uh, Why was which that? Which we'll see now. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's some sort of... Uh, they just didn't want the outsiders to know what the real art that has been put inside their house. I, I don't know, that's An element of privacy, in other words. Yeah, yeah, more... Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Privacy could be a better explanation. Yeah, we're the same everywhere. <laughs> So we're now inside a bathhouse. Ali, what's it called? It's called Sultan Amir Ahmed Bathhouse. And it's pretty cool right now, I must say. I feel like slipping into the bath myself. And you pointed out something quite interesting there, those little holes. Yeah, yeah. Those little, I mean, this is like the entrance of the hammam. And those little holes that you see underneath are the places that you're supposed to put your shoes, shoes in. Most of these hammams, they had these uh, channels underneath them, which was basically the heating system of the hammam which was very nice. I find them interesting, as you can see here. This bathhouse is quite close to the Bruger, this house, and the other wealthy houses of the neighborhood. So when the wealthy families wanted to come take a bath here, uh, they would come to these private sections, like a VIP section, so they could have their own privacy. Our new friend, Maria, Maria Salam. She told us that uh, there used to be this woman that would come to the bathhouse here and kind of hunt down other women while they were in the nip to match them with potential husbands to marry. It's like she was like a matchmaker. Yeah, so she came, she found women in the nip, very judgmental, and was like, you're suitable for him, you're suitable for him, you're suitable for him. This is, this is my new my friend. My inner property. Uh, okay, my, I'm Mason. Mason? Mason. Mason is Kurdish. Where in Kurdistan are you from? Uh, we are in the south part. We are like exchanging bad words with each other. Yeah, inappropriate. I said an extremely bad word yeah, in, in Farsi quite into his ear and he burst out laughing. Which I love. But don't even think about that, okay? <laughs> anyway, anything. But you pronounce it very well. Thank you, because a bit, I, you know, I say it a lot. I'll say yes. it to a lot, of, a lot of people deserve this title, you know? No, of I'm joking, course. I'm joking. No, that, that's the truth. <laughs> anyway, I love inappropriate words because maybe I'm a per. <coughs> I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not. Of course, I'm not even close. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna tell. Um, I'm Lee. Gonna, Lee. Yeah, T. Lee. Lee. L E E. Lee. What like a Chinese e? person is my name. Oh, yeah. He's Chinese. Are you Chinese? No, I'm Irish. Man, Irlandiam. You mean Irlandiam? Man, Dublin. 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 <laughs> You're from Dublin. Anyway, okay. I want to tell you another word. Okay. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the meaning for. <laughs> don't Ooh, even. Don't even. Don't even repeat cash it. <laughs> Anyway, okay, our friends. Hey, are, my pleasure. Are my pleasure. My pleasure. Take it easy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he, he wants to tell you some words. So, okay, in, in private. In private. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Don't say anything about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Relax. Okay. Oh, I go in the middle. In the middle. Okay, in the middle. Hi, Chelsea. Okay. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> King of the castle, king of the castle, do this, do that. Does it look like it?
Okay, so we've left that place now and we are going to where are we going next, Ali? Taba Tabai's house. And will you believe it? Bride's family. Mary Ann is joined. Bride's family. Mary Ann is inside. She's quit her job, she's left. And she's coming with she's us. She's helping us. So now we're in Taba Tabai house, which was also designed by that architect. What was his name? Uh, Ustad Ali Maryam. Who designed the house of uh, Berun Jubilil? What are your these? But there you go. See, I can't remember these names. They're really yeah, tricky. Makes sense. So he designed this house for the bride of the guy, and uh, or the bride's family at least. And in my opinion, it is much better than the first one. I didn't think the first one could be topped, but it's beautiful. And again, uh, more to that privacy thing. When you, if it was built in a way that if a stranger enters this house, they're not going to see the family, women in particular at the beginning they have to go all the way to the backyards over there or this way it has many backyards here and there so they had to go all the way there to be able to see the inner family which is interesting So we're now on the way to the third historical house of the day, Abbasi House. Is that correct? Abbasian. And I just I just read it. I read it that off. That was the a restaurant. Oh. So we made it inside Abbasian House, and I have to say my least favorite house of the day by a long shot. We're just in this big cluster of concrete and loads of overgrown trees in the middle. Stop that, this. That's Stop horrible. Stop this madness. No, Stop this now. No, no, I don't Ali, want to build this. Come on. That's crap down there. You... Ali, I don't think it's worth going even downstairs in this place. <laughs> See, there is a difference between this house and the other two. It's a two-story building and there's a lot. Yeah, I can appreciate the building, but I mean, the courtyard in it is absolutely horrible. And it had a, has a different architect to the other one, which is why the other ones are just, I really like the other ones. They're absolutely fantastic. This one. Nothing special at all. Oh, it's sunny today. The longer I'm in here, the more I'm appreciating it. It's just unfortunately not looked after nearly as well as the first two houses. It's really overgrown. I mean, the area where I am now is even a bit shabby. Look at these benches or whatever. That's a shame. If you're watching this, whoever is in charge of Kashan, sort your shit out. Yeah, I agree with you that it has not been taken care of properly. But the house itself, architecture-wise, is beautiful. Yeah, but sorry about this. Really good nister. So when we were just leaving that house, I noticed some of the staff were actually, they have this like little staff area out the door beside the entrance. And I noticed they were all smoking. And right above the what would you call that little pond yeah. with all the crap in it? So I challenged, I decided to challenge them and I went out to the guy said, no, no, you can't go out there. I said, one second, be a come, you know? And I'm like, I looked over, I saw all the pollution, all the crap thrown into this pond in this, you know, house and all the guys smoking. And I said, look, you're throwing your cigarettes in there. You're polluting the place, you know? One of the guys was just laughing and I had to tell him to shut up. I didn't film because I wasn't thinking about it at the time. And they saw how frustrated I was, but I cannot believe that, that the workers, the people yeah. who work there, are throwing their shit into the pond down below and just not giving a toss about the place. No, this, I, is, this is just too shameful. I actually appreciate what you did. If everyone, tourists, locals, if they saw this because people were seeing it and they were not taking any action, if everyone does what you did and go and talk about it, uh, things are going to be much different. So we've now come to this mosque here. Uh, what's the name, Ali? Uh, this is Agha Bozork Mosque. And it's a very beautiful mosque. We came here because I had to cool down after the uh, the freak I had in the last place at those guys. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. But look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful. this close to starting the a big, big fight. A yeah. big dome, two minarets, and there is a big, like, uh, basement floor what would you call it there's just a big drop down and yeah, it's really, yeah. really and cool. this is where the young clergymen are living now, right now yeah this is kind of cool about this so it's really really interesting we thought what better place to end this video than mm -hmm. right here so i hope you enjoyed our little day tour in kashan if you did make sure to give it a like comment down below and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one real real soon good luck Bonjour
Burjordi, he lives. He lives. Burjordi.